Well, 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 look at this. It's 2023 and there are still people out there using Arduino IDE 1.8.19. Why? Since 2.0 point, I don't know what, everything's better, right? I mean, we now have IntelliSense and we can code on a black background and we have this nifty new icon set and um, yeah, I'm lost here. But wait, are there maybe features in this old piece of software that make it far superior than the new 2.0 IDE with all those new nifty features? To me, they are. Let me show you. And yeah, and before you complain, uh, this isn't a bill episode. This is something that I'm recording right now on my notebook because you maybe know I'm in the middle of moving to Grand Canaria. So um, I have not a real setup right here. So, but I wanted to get some videos on the road. So if you're sitting there soldering iron at the ready, sorry, this is a software episode. You've been warned. To show you why I like the old IDE better, let me introduce you into a thing that I call library hell. Over the years, stuff accumulates, as it does with my sketches. Currently, my sketch folder holds about 169 elements. So there's a bunch of hours of work in there that mostly depends on libraries. Libraries are great. Nearly anything in the Arduino IDE depends on a library. All our boards we can use depend on libraries. And of course, nearly every piece of hardware out there is controlled via a library. Don't get me wrong, this is a great concept. It is the maximum flexibility you can ever have. But it has one flaw. So imagine the situation. It's a lazy Sunday morning, you're sitting around feeling pretty, and you think, well, what can I do to improve my Arduino installation? You know? All these libraries have these fancy update buttons over here. Maybe I should press them all and see what happens. Just install the, uh, all the new libraries that are out there. There are probably bug fixes. But sometimes the API changes. And while there are good documentations like the ESP project, which has a great documentation, some of the libraries are more obscure and not well documented what has changed. So in theory, after clicking any of these updates buttons, you have to check all your programs if they still work. All of them. I know, nobody does this. This will work, of course it will. Until it doesn't. The problem is, half a year from now, you will open an old piece of code, try to compile it, and it simply crashes out. Believe me, I've been there, did that, didn't like it. You'll be for half a day on a wild goose chase why this code doesn't work. And it simply doesn't work because you updated the library here right now without testing the code. Welcome to library hell. So how do we get around this mess? The easy answer is never update. Just like they say in IT, never touch a running system. Will work all the time. But what if your favorite OLED driver has a new library for a new piece of hardware you want to use in the upcoming project? So you need to update. So can we get updates in a more controlled fashion? And before you start a flameware down in the comments, I know Platform.io does this. I'm not talking about Platform.io here. I'm talking about the Arduino IDE. So please bear with me. So what if we could have multiple instances of the Arduino IDE? Under Windows, and I can only talk Windows here, this is tricky because the Arduino IDE stores its data somewhere in the user data path, somewhere in Windows, and it doesn't matter how many times you install it, it will always go to this path under the current user. Unless we tell the installation that this is a portable one. To make an Arduino 1.8 installation into a portable one, you first download the Arduino IDE from Arduino, the official source, extract it into a folder. I named it Arduino Porter 1. And then it's really simple. You simply create a new folder. Yeah, it's a German window. Sorry for that. In English, this is a new folder. And name this one portable. 
That's all. If you now start the Arduino XA, it searches for this folder. When it finds it, it simply goes for this folder, for its sketches, and for its what's definitions. Let me try that. So here's our new fresh installation of an Arduino IDE. Nothing special to see, is there? Let's check under Files, Preferences. And if you look down there, it tells me that the preference text where the IDE stores all its mumbo jumbo is stored in Arduino Porta, Portable Preferences. So this is a path we just created to store everything. And the sketchbook and the board definitions will be stored in this path too. And just to demonstrate that the installations are totally independent, I created a second one. Now we have two of them. We have Porta 1 and we have Porta 2. So I'll start installation Porta 1. And you see the default sketch is loaded as Leblink Porta 1. And this states up here, this is installation Porta 1. And if I start the second installation, it states Blink Mark Porta 2. This is installation Porta 2. If we look into the sketchbook, you only see this sketch, Blink Mark Porta 2. And on the other one, sketchbook, the Blink Porta 1. These are totally separated installations of an Arduino 1.8.19 IDE. And of course, you can run them from a flash drive, carry them with you everywhere you go, you have your IDE ready. If I'm going to install a library, I do this on the Porta 1 installation right here. So on this installation now, this version of the BME680 library is installed on SASNIN. And if I do the same on the other one, I can go for a totally different library for the BME680, something from Adafruit right here. If we look into the folders for the portable drives, this is Porter 1. You can see that there's a sketchbook folder now. There's my script I included in here. And there's a libraries folder, which now keeps the BME680 file. Let's check how this looks on the other drive. Portable, sketchbook, and Blinkomart Porter 2. And the library folder is now out of root with all the stuff it installs to just run here. Of course, there will be no crosstalk between those installations. They're totally independent. And on the plus side, it's a folder. You can compress a folder, you can move a folder, you can duck up the folder. It all contains every file you need for a project. So how do I proceed when I want to start a new project and I know there will be some more libraries in there and I want to have some updates in there? Well, it's simple. I have this absolutely minimal 1.8.19 version of the Arduino IDE here that has stripped down really everything. The, the examples are gone. Even the board files for Arduino standard are gone. So there's not much in this folder. If I start the XA now, we see that there are some preferences already set. One, it's set to English. I have added a bunch of board definitions over here for all the ESPs and the IT Tiny stuff. This is all stored in the preferences text. So please export your preference text. If you have a good grown preference text, please, by all means, use it. From here on, I choose my boards and you see there are no boards installed. Even the original Arduino boards aren't here. So if I want new, I want to use an ESP8266. I simply go here and I install the newest one. After I, I install the CPU I want to use, of course, it's time for the libraries. So go for manage libraries and install everything you think, well, I'm going to need that. If you know you're going to base a project on a different one you did before, you can always copy the libraries folder. That will be fine with that. And from here on, I simply start programming. What you definitely want to do, give the folder a name you can remember. The Arduino XA doesn't care in which folder it resides, so it's fine. And after that, remember to make backups. You can compress this folder with WinRAR, WinZip, 7-Zip, whatever you like, and store it in a safe location. Yeah, backups are a lifesaver and backups are a must. When after 25 hours of programming, suddenly your thumb drive starts to fail, 
you will thank me for that one. And so, this is pretty much all I have for you today. Hope this video was somewhat interesting, even without any new soldering and any new ideas or crazy software or stuff like that. See you guys in the future. Bye.